Many people have the perception that there is conflict between science and the Christian faith, and this includes young people who are at colleges and universities. And when they think that there's conflict between science and Christianity, many times that leads to despair. How can we help young people understand the proper relationship between science and Christianity? I'm joined today by Dr. Bernard Palmer, who is a retired senior surgeon from the United Kingdom and also a Christian to help answer that question. Uh, Dr. Palmer, as you interact with students, uh, what types of questions do they have when it comes to science, faith, relationships, and how do you help them answer those questions? I think one of the biggest problems is the, how do you understand the beginning of Genesis? It's, uh, there are some people, and some people unfortunately teaching them, that if you're not reading this in a very literal way, you've, you're denying the reliability of the Bible. And you know, that's a tension I had to work through. I'm convinced that the, the Bible, the Old Testament, is the word of God, because Jesus made it very clear. You're in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God, Jesus said to the Sadducees. So my issue is, well, how should I understand Genesis 1? And when you get into the, the text, it becomes very clear that the word day is used in three separate ways. Mm -hmm. you know, yom in the Hebrew, it's either 12 hours, 24 hours, or a long period. Now to say that you've got to understand day in terms of just 24 hours seems naive. And the rest of the Bible, the word day, rather like in English, you know, this is the, the, the day of new things. It, it's not 24 hours, this is a period. And then you go into a bit more, you see the structure of Genesis 1, that the six days are clearly divided into uh, three and three. In the first three, God made the, the substance, and the second three, God populated them. So he made light and darkness in the first day, and on the fourth day, he made the, uh, the, the, the sun and the moon. Now, they weren't idiots who wrote this stuff. It has to be, some way, Hebraic literature trying to teach me something. Now, what's it teaching? Well, very clearly, God said. That's the key phrase, keeps being repeated. And what I'm convinced that Genesis 1 is teaching is that God is sovereign, God created, and therefore I am under the authority of this God. I'm not free to make up my own mind about things. It, it all comes together and, and makes sense. Why people can't see this? I love the story of John Newton who was the uh, discoverer of gravity. And he was sitting in his study in Cambridge. And someone came in and they saw a beautiful model of the solar system on his desk that he was doing this research on. And this friend, who was an atheist, said, who made this? And Newton said, nobody. They were so silly. Someone made it. No, nobody. Come on. And then Newton says, can't you understand that if you think that simple model must be made by somebody, then why can't you see that the whole universe has been made by somebody? Now, do you find that non-Christian students ask different questions than Christian students when it comes to science faith issues? I think there are two sorts of questions in my experience with students. Some of them are because they are quite determined that they're never going to believe. Uh, and you tend to go round and round in circles with people like that. If people are honest, then there's a, a different quality. I mean, I had genuine questions when I was uh, you know, looking at these things. And I'm very grateful for people who actually bothered to answer them because if the Christian message is true, then investigating it must be good if it's honest investigation. If I'm so blinkered in where I start, then perhaps I'll, I will never move on because I really don't want to find answers. But 
I think honest people, whether they're Christians or not, will want to probe. One of my concerns is that I've seen in some people who've been brought up in rather restrictive uh, Christian circles that they don't want to question because they fear that this might undermine their faith instead of strengthening it. Now, I think that's a great, great shame because truth is discovered by searching. And I, I would want people to really question, like, who is Jesus? That's the fundamental question, everyone's mm -hmm. answer. We need to get people asking, Christians and non-Christians. Many Christians can't answer why they believe in Jesus, even though the Bible says, be able to give a reason for the hope that's within you. We've got to get people asking questions.